Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Beauty Beacons of Fiction, where I'm going to recreate the looks of iconic beauty icons. Women that may be fictional, but are still very influential and have very well-known iconic looks. So the first Beauty Beacon of Fiction is going to be Elizabeth Bennet. Elizabeth Bennet was requested a lot when I announced that I'm going to start this series and you guys have been asking for a Regency look for ages so I felt like she was a good place to start off. So Elizabeth Bennet is the leading character in Jane Austen's novel Pride and Prejudice which was published in 1813 and she is also one of the most popular female characters in history, I feel, definitely in literature. She's a very likeable and relatable character and I believe that is one of the main reasons why she is so persistent in history and people still love her up until this day. Ever since Pride and Prejudice was first published in 1813, there have been countless adaptations. Countless. And they are still coming out. People are still recreating Pride and Prejudice. But every time it is about the love story between Elizabeth and the oh-so-popular original Mr. Darcy. <laughs> so as far as Elizabeth's looks go, there is not much written about her outward appearance in the books. It is said that she is not as pretty as one of her sisters, and it's also said that she is quite pretty indeed on her own when not compared to her sister, and she has dark eyes. And she is also said to have a quite slender frame, be very kind of elegant, um, and quite attractive. So that's not much to go off, and all the ladies that have impersonated or played Elizabeth in adaptations all have very different varying looks so I decided to go for my own interpretation go for a nice kind of typical Regency look a very pretty look I feel that Elizabeth Bennet may have worn so this is the look that I came up with nice little Regency look and I'm going to show you how to recreate that so let's begin with the makeup ladies in the Regency era didn't really wear a lot of makeup or um, if they did it was done in secrecy and it wasn't supposed to show a lot so usually what was done was just a little bit of powder and some rouge and a little bit of lip balm maybe a little bit of soot was used to darken the eyelashes and eyebrows so what I'm going to do is start with a little layer of foundation I'm cheating here definitely but just to create that flawless complexion there was a lot of emphasis on women's complexion in that time so I want to kind of make mine a little bit more perfect than it maybe is. So I'm going to apply a layer of foundation, add a little bit of concealer as well to cover up my dark circles. And then I'm going over with a white face powder. This one doesn't have a lot of color payoff, but it's still a white powder and it mattifies my face. So for my eyebrows, instead of soot, I'm just going to use a little bit of eyeshadow and I'm going to fill my eyebrows in um, to kind of approach the shape that my eyebrows would naturally be a little bit more. My eyebrows are plucked obviously so I'm going to just fill them in a little bit with a dark colored eyeshadow and then I'm going to apply a very thin layer of mascara just on my top and bottom lashes make sure to get rid of all the clumps because we don't want this to be noticeable at all and that's the eyes already done so moving on to cheeks rouge um blusher as we say today i'm going to use this bright pink blush red would have been used back then i don't have a red blush at the moment and i don't want to use a lipstick this time because their rouge would have been in powder form so i'm going to apply this blush all over my cheeks just make this look like i'm naturally flushed so i'm not going to concentrate this anywhere just kind of make a wash over my cheeks so then I'm going to take a color that matches that, so again a little bit of a pink, and I'm going to apply that on my lips, and I have gone for a lip stain, just because that looks, again, probably the most similar to what it would have looked like back then. When women would just mix their uh, rouge with something that has a waxy consistency to apply it onto their lips. And there's the makeup pretty much done, so moving on to the hair. I am going to start by dividing out two thin sections in the front to make my curly bangs. Now obviously my hair is way too long, as you can see my curls are way too long to be Regency style curls, but I'm just gonna roll with it. So I'm going to separate this out, and then I'm going to separate out another piece of hair that is going to go from behind my ear to behind my other ear, so just a little bottom section of my hair, and all the rest of my hair I'm going to pull back into a ponytail. And this is just going to be a ponytail on the center of my head. And when that is done, I'm going to flip my head upside down and braid all of that bottom hair that I have. And I'm braiding kind of going upwards so that it blends in with my hairstyle nicer later on. 
So when I'm done braiding, I'm going to tie this off with a hair elastic and then I'm going to fluff up this braid. My hair is hopelessly thin for doing hairstyles like this. Um, so I need to kind of fake my way around it. So I'm going to just tug at the sides of my braid to make it look a little bit more voluminous. Okay, so back to the ponytail. I'm going to actually just tie a knot in my hair, in my ponytail. And this is going to create kind of a very soft bun that would have been worn in the Regency era a lot. And I'm going to leave the tail hanging out and I'm going to come back to that later. But for now, I'm just going to pin this bun knot thing with a lot of bobby pins so that it stays in place. And when it's pinned, I'm going to take that braid that I just made, wrap it around my bun and secure that with bobby pins as well. And I'm going to just tuck and hide the tail underneath the bun. And when that is done, it is time to curl the hair. So I'm just going to spray all of the hair that is still loose at this point with a little bit of heat protectant, just to be sure. And then I'm going to take a very small curling iron, just the smallest one that I have. And I'm going to start curling my hair. And I'm going to curl quite small sections because I want these curls to be very tight ringlets. And every time I finish a curl, I'm going to just keep it rolled up and pin it to my head to cool down like that. So when I've done all of the front of my hair, I'm going to take that little tail that I still have hanging out of my bun and I'm going to just curl that as well. So after giving my hair a couple of minutes to completely cool down, I'm going to take out these bobby pins and let down my curls. And then I'm going to kind of separate them and make them a little bit smaller and a little bit softer just by using my fingers. And there is your Elizabeth Bennet look completely done. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. The very first episode of Beauty Beacons of Fiction. So if there is anyone else that you would like me to recreate the looks of, any fictional um, woman, then please let me know in the comments below. I will look through and pick someone out for next time. I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!